Hi there, Winning Ways fans, and welcome to another edition of your favorite Monday show, which goes on through the whole week, and you can catch it on Gold Circle YouTube. Uh, we're going to chat a little bit about uh, the goings-on over the weekend. Uh, first, we've got, got to start with the worst goings-on of the whole lot, the Sharks. Yeah, I tossed I, the game. I, I, I tossed one the point. Game. They, were, they were way the better side away from home. It was a very pleasing performance if you're a shock supporter. Pleasing to get beaten by a point in the last minute. Yeah, there's some sort of lose. Yeah. I agree with you. I was I was angry when the final whistle went because they shouldn't have lost that game. But they're on the way back, and then the Lions took out the Stormers. Yeah, like a sawtooth. Like a sawtooth. Yeah, the mountain the goats came up there and got yeah, a they got, club. They, yeah, they got it. The Lions are a good side too. But I think uh, Russi. The Springbok coach, can be pleased with some of the players who are coming through from all those uh, areas because they're going into New Zealand now and making a bit of an impact, which is good. We saw it when the Bulls went there. They one game, they were well clear of Kiwi side. So about uh, them and the Sharks threw away good advantages over there. But I'm pleased, and I know you're a passionate golfer. What is the story? You would have watched until the early hours. Patrick Reed, Bader. Well done to Fat Boy. He yeah. did it. He does every good. time he, yeah. he pulls yeah. his one sleeve up. Well, you know, you've got to get those muscles into play. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> but, uh, but he, the, the he young played with coming. real guts yes, because, you yeah. know, he had all the pressure um, and he played some fabulous golf shots mm. and his putting was out of the top draw because he but made putts that were James, crucial. those two boys who came at him late because McElroy, your tip to win it, had every well, chance he's a, he fell he's away. A, He's a baderless, as we would call it. Okay, baderless. baderless but yeah. the two boys with baders, as, as you like to say, yeah. uh, came through. Especially uh, Spieth was a fantastic run. Yeah, yeah, he put it. And the runner of Fowler, great player. Super, always there or thereabouts. Bridesmaid Fowler, mm. he, he's he's always in the mix. Yeah. But McElroy's a disappointment because he missed a putt on two for yes. Eagle, yes. which you, he cannot miss. Not yeah. McElroy. Yeah. And from there, it's just like he lost it. You know, yeah, it's like he sort of goes trying trying to get ahead of himself, trying to get ahead of himself, and to to drop shots when everyone else. Yes, is up there making shots. He, he was two over on the day, which is pathetic. For pathetic, him. yeah. And he just looked like he completely. He's done it before. Yeah. And but you know what? You always question. Enough. You always question a guy who's got that much ability that does that. Yeah. James, you lastly your verdict on Tiger. Good to see him playing there and making the cut and finishing off uh, even. No, he missed the last putt. But great to see him back, eh? Yeah. I think that um, this time next year, we'll be talking about him big time. Yeah. He's, he's really his back. Right, I know your Arsenal one, and they they don't oh, get into don't talk to me But about what about your Man United please mates? Don't talk to me about them. Okay. What, okay, we leave Arsenal. What about your Man United mates? They should have been five down at half time. Sterling, if he jumped off a boat, wouldn't it water? There were penalty decisions that were diabolical. Nice, Some of those um, tackles. I think the ref, what was his name? Martin Atkinson. Yeah, he's from yeah, the, uh, he's, mid Manchester, I think. I would think, yeah. But we're wearing a red what, shirt. Like what are two Man United's credit? Great fight back. Yeah. Moan Rina, he'll be chuffed. Yeah, he'll no, a whole different ball game, you know, for the first time. <laughs> he beat his years. mate. Yeah. Now they go, uh, they still just need the one win away from the title, but I think the main United boys were pleased that they ruined their party at the, on their home ground. They came there thinking we got it. Half time, it was all over. Yeah. Pogba came to the party, he played very well, and uh, I'm pleased with them, but both sides needed a defence, James. Both sides. It's not often you get these sides conceding three and three, a team as high as Man uh, uh, City. They've got to go on Tuesday, James, tomorrow night. They're at, they're Arsenal they're conceded at two to Stoke at home. No, uh, Southampton, wasn't it? Uh, Southampton. Southampton yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got Stoke coming. Yeah, that's on the horizon. That's a horror. Yeah, and yeah. Chelsea dropping points. So the league looks, 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 looks top four, I think, is now sorted. Anything else in the sporting scene that caught you this weekend? No, racing much more important. Anything about the sevens? I didn't follow it. The sevens, sevens um, we ended up losing the sevens in the last minute for uh, with a whole new side because yes. the real sevens side is um, down at the Gold Coast for the Commonwealth Games. I wonder so what we, different coach, everything yeah, I saw yeah, there. A whole new side. But and where did played, they finish? They played brilliantly. They got they, great players. I, I didn't. I know did they, they make got the quarters. The semi, they made got beaten in the semi final. Okay, oh, well done to them. By Fiji. They had them, but just inexperienced. But yeah. what, what a great bunch of guys. And they don't tackle great. That's yeah. the problem. Well, they they new, run well, but they don't tackle well. It seems to be um, Well, let's problem. go and look at some horses that ran well that we want to follow. Actually, let's go and pick up the three to follow. <laughs> right.
Right, we're going to go to the first one, Grable, uh, Friday night. Um, there's some nice horses being stepped out in these barrier trials, and we do focus on them because you can find winners out of them. As you, If you follow the show, we've picked four out of the barrier trials, and three have won. Um, the one that didn't win ran will fourth, win next time. fourth in the black top. Yeah, it will win shoes. next time. Don't yeah. worry. Okay, but they, you've got to follow them in the right races. So let's go and have a look at uh, Friday night. Cabo de Cruz. This is a Cape Cross Colt with Dennis Dreyer. Have a look at this horse. Yeah, this is a, a very nice. It's three old unraced uh, Irish horse. And as you know, Cape Cross has given us uh, many champions uh, all over the world. Uh, see the stars, uh, Ouija board. So this is as well bred as you'll get. But the race horse that's interesting is the one that you liked as well, James Farland, the two year old. Yeah, this ran a cracking barrier trial as well. Pick it up, put it in your black book. It's he's a front. two year old, um, and he's by Karari, trained by Doug Campbell. He's in front at the moment. Yes. And Cabo de Cruz is right behind him. Yeah, these are the two that I think put up uh, ex exceptionally good gallops. I like the, I like the look of this horse. I had a good look at uh, Dennis Dry's horse, the Cape Cross, and I think he's going to be a real special horse in time. He, he doesn't know what he's doing here, and, and, and the winner is say the Karari's that don't mess around there, James. Well, this is galloping, and certainly you know it's just getting um, hands and heels. But he's sticking to his task, and he looks like a nice horse too. But Cabo de Cruz is just cantering. Uh, the horse that uh, moved up next door to them is obviously Queen's Plain from uh, Duncan Howell's stable. That's one already, one first time out. So um, have a very good look at uh, those two. Cabo de Cruz, remember, is an April foal. So he's only he's six months younger than yeah, an actual three-year-old right. than he is now. So he's actually Beautiful just three. Horse, yeah. So um, he's certainly a horse that we're going to have to have a look at. We move on from there to Cape Town. We've got a Kenilworth and um, down the straight, first race, Candace Bass Robinson stepped, stepped out a really nice horse. Machiavelli um, in the Marshall of Colours. Let's go and pick him up at the start. Yeah, interesting enough, uh, the, all the rage here was a horse called Frank Lloyd Wright, a Captain L who runs second. He starts three off the left. The horse we picked out is draw one and as... Jimbo says the famous Marsh Silks. And the winner looks a useful horse too. Mr. Crumford or something, whatever they call it. Nicknamed uh, one of the, the, the gatekeepers. Nicknamed Brett Crawford, Mr. Crumford or whatever it's called. That wins from the front. The horse that was all the rage is, is uh, dropped a few lengths off. But the horse that we found, James Machiavelli, nice education. Well, it shows you this horse, Mr. Crumford, ran five lengths off them in his first run. Mm, shows you how much he's come on. Yes. But um, Billy Prestige's horse is out cantering along in front. Mr. Crumford's second. The horse that we find is about sixth on the inside in the blue and pink and white colors of Marsh Shirtliff. I like the way this horse galloped because when you watch the head on, and you can always go back and watch them, um, you see that he didn't get a smack. He just mm. got punched out, and um, he will come on an absolute tunnel from this run. Yeah, Mr. Crumford's got clear, Greg Sheena, and was, I, had, I spoke to Justin Snaith about his horse getting beat here, and he said, the guy dropped him off, we're trying to teach him to do the right things, and it was a walking pace, and he said the winner got clear of him, but don't write him off, he's a very good horse. But as you say, the horse we found in third, showing good resolution, James Late. Well, if he's a very good horse, then I really like the horse in third, because um, he, must be, uh, he must come on a ton from that run. Both these horses had run, the yeah. winner and the second horse had run, and that's yeah. the difference. And he's a Silvano too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Silvano uh, was bred by main chance out of an Al Mufti mare. It's a great cross, yeah. Silvano out of an Al Mufti mare. Let's go and have a look at the third one, and we go to Gravel on Sunday, another barrier trial. Uh, we picked up Checkpoint Charlie um, in very famous Quasili Natal colors. Um, these guys are big supporters, yeah. Priggy, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, yeah, this is Priggy, Priggy Sinisundrum. He's got horses with uh, a few guys in Joba. He's got with Tony Rivland. He's, he's one of the big players. He's quite a healthy guy, too. Yeah. You yeah, know, big guy. He strides around and he's a, he's a good lad. So yeah. well done to him. Looks like he might have a nice horse. Prince has got his horses ticking over very nicely. And he's good with the barrier trials. They come out after yeah, the barrier, barrier trials trial. and they win. Prince so, is very good. So yeah. we have a very close look at them. The have a look at this one. It's a, there's Robbie a lot of horses. Who, of you that don't know. A lot of horses uh, work well in this race. And interesting because because uh, just before we show the race, James, people are waiting to see The Secret is Out. Yeah. And a and, uh, lovely barrier trial. The stay met, very good barrier trial. But your horse comes from near the back. Yes, let's go and pick them up at the start. Let's go and see what they look like. There you go. Um, you'll see that... Uh, 
You see that in front is uh, the Roy Zara, and yes. the secret is out is up next door to that. And in behind that is uh, uh, Vaughan Marshall's other one, the Captain L. But yeah, this one's a cracking race. It's called Charge de Fez. It's yeah. in the white cap. The horse that James has found in Preggy's colours is a green and black, third last. And uh, even though they're finishing a bunch, this this uh, this crew, I did like the way that uh, your horse Checkpoint Charlie quickens up. He's a brave tin soldier. Yeah, out of hot reception. You remember, I think yes. uh, Frank trained that. That's right, yeah. yeah. And uh, that, that was quite speedy. This horse comes under a bit of pressure. He's way off them. But remember, all the horses are cantering in front, so it does give him a chance to catch up. And uh, he really does catch up quite nicely, this horse, Checkpoint Charlie, to end up running on really well to run second. But they're all cantering along in front. Have a close look at the one in the blue with the white cap. That ran a very good barrier trial. But I like the way this horse finished it off, yeah. especially against older horses as well. And yeah, that's, that, that's also the key. That's the, the key. The big key. Yeah. So um, that was a, a good barrier trial by Checkpoint Charlie. We'll keep that one in mind. And uh, Vaughan Marshall's um, Captain Al Philly, that certainly looks like worth, well worth having a look at. Um, we're going to move on and see what shouldn't happen. That's what I feel like after watching Rory McElroy compound when I put all my hard-end cash on him. And um, so, you know, we're going to be talking to so Justin Snaith later. Yeah. No, I'm out. Uh, I'm telling you, but Justin's going to put me right. Justin yeah. set he's, you right. He's going to tell me the lowdown on all his horses. He's got some and he's going to whisper it so no one out there can hear. Yeah, it'll be interesting to, to, to see how his July winners come back after showing yeah. fertility problems. Yeah. Interesting to no, see. No, well, that's going to be an interesting, interesting conversation. Yeah. Speaking to we'll Justin. find out if he's come back as well. No, he's as strong as a lion. I've seen him striding yeah. around you. Yeah. No striding. fertility problems with him. No fertility <laughs> Yeah. Right, we're yeah. going to have a look at um, <laughs> the Plum of the Week and uh, give you one that you should have picked up because uh, we told you about it. Liquid Rainbow. Dark Moon Rising is now getting the wake-up call towards the outside, then one direction. Amor Ardiente still goes though. Francesco, Liquid Rainbow Techno Captain, and now Dark Moon Rising is running on. So they come to the last hundred though. Dark Moon Rising, Francesco. Liquid Rainbow on the inside, but Dark Moon Rising's going on to win it. And it's Dark Moon Rising who won it. Second place, perhaps Black Ball, then Liquid Rainbow and Francesco. Right, well, there you go. You know what? We can only put one on there when we can beat the Cape Town Raiders. And uh, Laff had this one primed. He said on understarter's orders this was the right one. There was nearly fisticuffs about which was the right one between <laughs> some of his partners, wasn't it? Yeah. And it went, uh, you could have got three to one at one stage about yeah. this horse, wasn't he? Yeah, that's right. He was, he was On Interbet, I think he was yeah, three he, to one. He yeah. shortened because uh, he's, he's shown uh, that he's got a lot of ability. Yeah, he's a really nice horse. But we did say that this was the right horse. And uh, every podcast you listen to, every bit of information you listen to, you would have found. Just talking about the podcast, I mean, uh, uh, one of my clients spoke to me and said to me, listen to the podcast, and he said, Jimbo tipped the horse to back because he told Puller how to do the feet and all that. Puller yeah. was in the game reserve. Yeah, it was a horse that I used to train. It's my way. Uh, it yeah. won, eh? Yeah, so won. Fantastic. It's great for them. You know, yeah. I'm really pleased Well, it's good that you put it out there because the people yeah. loved that. Yeah. No, well, that's what it's all about. We fixed the whole thing and people got to know these things. Podcasts are important. They're uh, the way to go. We're going to uh, come back with Current Affairs. Well, the key features for me are I play a lot of soccer 10s, soccer 6s and soccer 4s on the tote. And the key feature for me is that I can follow online 
the payouts as the soccer matches are going and, exact, and see exactly where I stand. And if I see I'm winning a lot of money, I can always back the other team to cover myself as well. So even if I don't catch the soccer team, I can still make money from it if I'm in a position where it's paying a lot of money. So that is the key thing for me, that I follow the, the in-play prices and payouts as they go. Right, welcome back, and uh, it's Current Affairs. Great racing right around the country. We had uh, a lot to talk about, a bit of international news as well, and our sponsors, Magic Millions. they got a big sale. Let's start with them, James. Yeah, they, they uh, got a big sale coming up in June. This June, is the big one. June, it's always a good sale. I've to always go. been fortunate enough to buy top horses off there. You know, yeah. Harry's son came with the June sale. Yeah, there. we'll talk to Justin about Sir Frenchy as well. That's right. Find out about that one. Yeah. You know, we I, I hear this. No, I heard it's account. getting better. The word Brom got hold of me and said yeah. Sir Frenchy's flying. Yeah. So that's good Fly. news. Yeah. But very good. Good, James, very good uh, racing around the country. Yeah, fantastic racing. We start with Joburg, yeah. obviously, and um, the big uh, classic day on uh, Saturday. Obviously marred by Anthony Del Pesce's fall, and we wish him the best yeah, in his recovery, recovery. but um, apparently things are okay. He's going, going well. So, oh, good. Yeah, Let's hope so. Let's, he's, uh, he's luckily he's got a big cushion in the lead for the champ Jockeys Championship. He was about 35 clear. So yeah. I don't think that's, uh, that was his priority. I think it was very uh, sad the way things happened. I never got to see the head on. I haven't seen the head on But it just looked like the, the, the horse stumbled and catapulted him out of the yeah, saddle and, yeah, and he had like it. it hard for. Anyway, let's go to the pretty poly stakes first and go and pick them up at the start. The trailer racing about four to five lengths off the leader. They're running down towards the 600 metre marker. Miss Pumerang, a narrow leader with Dagmar up in front. Urban Oasis, frankly, has moved up down the inside the blue colours. Celtic sees only got half a length to make up in behind that Coyote girl. Further back to Starfly, River Rafting and Cloud Break, only two lengths off the leader. Heading down to the 300 and Celtic Sea has come for to hit the frontier. From the back, Cloud Break is a challenger. Then Dagmar in behind that Coyote girl, but 150 to go. Celtic Sea by two lengths. Cloud Break and Dagmar are behind that, but it's Celtic Sea's all the rage here by two. From Dagmar and Cloud Break and Celtic Sea won it by two lengths. Second placing Dagmar, then came Cloud Break, Urban Oasis, River Rafting and Starflyer, Coyote girl, frankly, and Miss Boomerang. Well, wonderful to see uh, Bling Kamalo back. He's back in action. And, and this is a, a superb uh, Captain L. The debut run was beaten by a horse that was touted to be invincible. And uh, this backed it up with a great win in the Pretty Potty. Yeah, uh, she's, uh, as you say, built, bred by Volga Bostruff, Maritz Fantine. And um, good luck to them. Uh, see how Captain L come out of their stable. It shows mm. you that they, they need some and, speed uh, in some of Sean Terry, it's a knack of finding his top Captain L. Sean finish. Terry. Yeah. Kamala back. But then we move on, obviously, to the Protea, which is the, th um, the grade three, 600 meters for the, we'll show you the last 600 meters for the Colts and Gelding. Uh, let's go and pick him up at the start, the unbeaten Bald Eagle. Sit down with 600 to go. Diwali's the leader, got it by Alenthia from Rule the Knight and Zahed. Bald Eagle's on the stand side, a length and a half to make up. Then comes Van Halen. Heavenly Risk is further back, followed by Royal Italian. Then comes Cirillo and Green Hayes. 300 to go to Wally, the leader. Bold Eagle is moving up to it on the outside. 
Then comes Van Halen, Heavenly Risk further back with 200 to go. Diwali is still the leader here. Bold Eagles under the stick, tries to get on terms. And then comes Cirillo, here's Bold Eagle. Cirillo's flying up down the inside. Bold Eagle and Cirillo, it's gonna get close. Bold Eagle, the sky's the limit. Cirillo second, three lengths away to Diwali, then Royal Italian. Further back, Green Haze, Van Halen, Heavenly Risk. Then came Zahed and... Well, three out of three for Bold Eagle. Well done to Gavin Van Zell and his clients, and uh, that was Bonji Del Pesce at his best. Spare a thought for the, the Pomodoro, who was the runner-up. Could lift again, Cerulea. Yeah, absolutely. He made up a lot of ground at the, in the final 400 metres. But uh, this horse was bred by Ryo Stud, yes. and um, his uh, son of Bold Silvano. Interestingly enough, Mike the Cock wanted to buy this horse at the sale, he told me. Yeah. And uh, the vet, two vets failed it. And uh, go. Gavin went and bought it, and it just shows you he has won three from three. So no. you know what? <laughs> you, yeah. don't know. No, you never know about these things, what uh, no, people find right, wrong no. with horses and right with horses. Yeah, and good for the new stallions, you know, Vol Silvano and, and, of course, Pomodoro. Good to see them. Yeah. We go on to the Man of War, um, grade three. This is the sprint uh, over 1,100 meters. Let's go and see them from the 600. And side ahead of Green Plains, Whirly Whirly further back. Vicom six lengths off the leader. Purple Diamond racing towards the rear with Al Wash. They race down with 500 metres left to go. Pinnacle Peak, the overall leader from Para Palace. Down the centre is uh, down to zero. Further back to Premier Show. Mustakim's under pressure at the moment. Five lengths off the leader. Further back in the field comes Green Plains and trying to run on his San Furman and Vicomte. 300 to go, Pinnacle Peak down to zero. Green Plains emerging from the pack. Then Premier Show, Prince of Cajal. Pinnacle Peak, the leader from down to zero. On the outside is Green Plains, but Pinnacle Peak's run them ragged here. Pinnacle Peak going all the way in the finish and colours by two. Beat down to zero. Third place, Green Plains, Premier Show, Prince of Cajal. Then came Vicomte and Elwash. Well, firstly, well done to Dory Sham and then uh, John Finlayson. He's been a great owner over the years. And Dory produces us in fine it's form. First, I think it's the first group winner in Joburg. So fantastic. fantastic. And, you know, you James Karori? Yeah, Karori. Every week it's a feature game. And the other fun. John read it. So John you all the Johns. We've got that name right. We'll never get that Narrow wrong. Creek. Narrow yeah. Creek. John Everett. Well yeah. done, John. Yeah. Reads a very good horse. And uh, the jump pot down to zero, tried hard again, but couldn't beat Pinnacle Peak from the it's start, James. From the jump, and it ran across the track. It must have run an extra 10 metres. So um, it was a pretty good, a pretty good win from pretty that Pretty good one. win, yeah. We then move on to uh, the Horse Chestnut Stakes, Grade 1, and uh, Legal Eagle stepped back from his Cape Town <laughs> campaign and um, showed that he hadn't lost any of his sparkle, although I thought he was uh, tad pressed, pressed at the end. So. Yeah, he is a six-year-old, but I think this is... Uh, nine over nine over a mile. Yeah, Marcus, it's Marcus, absolutely brilliant. Brilliant on this driver. Horse. Brilliant. Arthur Marcus, a genius on horse. And James, this horse, it's the eighth Group One race win. Yeah. You know, I, I remember you look back at Jetmaster, who was such a brilliant horse. He won ten Group Ones. You know, the Miesk won ten Group Ones. These are super horses. This is one eight. Yeah, fabulous horse. Let's go and watch him at the start. Fifteen hundred meters and fired away. There, Juventi was slow, as was Romani Prince, not too well away, but Legal Eagle bounced away in front here. So Legal Eagle, the early leader from Nother Russia, who's gone up second, Brazuka's in third. They're not going that quickly up front, and Legal Eagle's doing it at his own gallop. Unagi's back in fourth. French Navy's in fifth position, four lengths off the leader. A length back to Romani Prince, who's on the outside of runners. A further back to Deo Juventi, and Orchid Island settles in at the back end of the field, seven lengths off the leader. They race to the side of the course with 1,200 metres to go and Legal Eagle still doing it at his own fractions here, led by two lengths from Brazuka in second, another Russia racing away in third. Another two lengths away to French Navy and Unagi, they five lengths off the gallop here, Romani Prince is two lengths away, behind that comes Deo Giaventi and Orchid Island is at the back end, seven or eight lengths off the leader as they bound for home here in the HF Oppenheimer, Horse Chestnut Stakes. Legal Eagle says, catch me if you can. With 700 to go, he's gone two lengths clear. You have Brazuka. Another Russia stalks them back in third. And then comes Unagi racing away to French Navy. And then comes Romney Prince. 500 to go. Legal Eagle by a length from on the outside. Another Russia puts on the pressure. Nagi's behind that. Then comes Brazuka. 300 to go. Anton Marcus asks for more. Legal Eagle and the response is immediate. They pull the length and a half clear of another Russia. Unagi's down the inside, but Legal Eagle maintains the advantage with 100 to go from another Russia who tries hard. 
Legal Eagle half a length clear from Nother Russia and unbeaten over a mile. Legal Eagle, South Africa's champion. Beats Nother Russia four lengths away to a nog. He then came Brazil. Well, there we are. What people wonder why uh, Arthur Marcus is, is King Arthur. This is a fantastic ride. He dictated James. He let the young man come on the filly. Just gave him a little bit and then kicked at the right time. Exactly. Just as he had pushed him more slightly off a straight course, but yeah. brilliant race riding. That's yeah. it. Uh, yeah, that, everyone should watch that race yeah. ride, James. That is a masterful race ride. And uh, well done to Sean Terry. He's kept this horse on the boil. Another group one win for him and this horse. And the new owners, Billy Henderson, Brown, Brown and um, Headley. And Headley. Well yeah. done to them. They, they said, let's go. This horse has now earned 11.5 million rand. Yeah, he's Fantastic. just a, he's great just a job by the horse. trainer. Fabulous great job, horse, yeah. yeah. And um, uh, as you know, Pippa Micklebrook. Pippa, so well done. Know, Evan so Tour, the champion from Evan Tour. Yeah. Okay, we move on to the classic, and we go to the start, and this was a real turn up for the books, but the unfortunate part was um, uh, obviously Majestic Mambo falling, because mm -hmm. I'm telling you, when you watch this race, yeah. Majestic Mambo is going better than anything. Let's go and pick him up at the start. Ready to go in the SA Classic and they're racing away. A good beginning here. Majestic Mamba, if anything, was slightly slow to respond. Leica Panther was very quick. Royal Crusade on the far side goes off to lead. Surcharges trying to negate that deep draw. Al Shibar's gone outside of them. Greek fires further back and then came Roy Had Enough. Lobo's legend in behind that noble secret. Heroes on as about eight or nine lengths off the leader. That's followed in behind that by Darkest Hour, who gives them quite a bit. A throng races further back, Majestic Mamba and Silver God. They're about 14, 15 lengths off the leaders. Al Shibar hastens up the gallop through the 1200. Al Shibar in the SA Classic by five or six lengths now leads. From in second, Royal Crusade. Surcharge in a beautiful position in third. Five or six lengths off the leader, followed directly by Leica Panther, then Greek Fire, Lobo's Legend, and Roy Had Enough is on the outside of runners. Darkest Hour gives them nine or ten lengths start, followed by Noble Secret, and Throng is further back down the line. Then comes towards the inside, Silver God, Majestic Mambo's last. Majestic Mambo's got 15 lengths to make up as they turn for home in the two million round SA Classic. Al Shibar by four lengths here from Royal Crusade. Leica Panther surcharged directly up the centre of the track. Then Lobo's Legend. Greek Fire starting to make a bit of progress on the outside. Then comes Roy Had Enough. They followed by Darkest Hour and Silver God. 400 metres to go. Lobo's Legend surcharged Leica Panther. They pick up the advantage in the Classic. And the boys down. There's a boy down on the Majestic Mambo. It's in front here. Lobo's Legend by a length. Surcharge like a panther. Wider out is noble secret. Lobo's legend in front in the classic. Surcharge tries hard. It's Lobo's legend clear by two. Lobo's legend has beaten Surcharge like a panther. Noble secret. Roy had enough. Then Silver God. Further back in the field was strong. Then heroes on our behind. Well, the humble hero, Joe Soma. What a masterful feat. This horse hadn't been beyond sprints. And uh, he got all his mates and he took a share himself. Nice to see Mark Curry, Jeff Schull, uh, Larry Nestat, JJ, oh, JJ, what do you call JJ. it? JJ. JJ, the jet plane. Yeah. This is fantastic for them. And, you know, trippy, people are looking for uh, trippies. You know, you've got Gold Standard who went met distance, but they, they speed horses. Yeah. This is a training feat. Oh, it's it's unbelievable. Nice. When you just go from six furlongs and suddenly put the horse in the classic group one, never been in this Wins time. comfortably. And he won well. He won a very good race. The um, humble, well done, the humble hero and Gabby. Yeah. A great team. And you, you give Joe Soma the right horse, the right result. So well done to all of them. I'm very, very pleased for all of them. And uh, where was this horse, horse bred, James? He was bred by Claverflay. Claverflay. Yeah. I've written so over the name. Have a here, very so close look, Claverflay. Claverflay. Yeah. Well done. He's out of a, I think he's out of a Western Wintermare. You know, that's yeah. a great nick. That, nick yeah. um, anyway, it, it just... Um, Western winter mares are going to be like hen's teeth. They, yeah. they really are the business. And um, James, so touching two more horses, surcharge. Runs a very good race. Honest. Used but, up, honest. You know, there's been wraps around this horse. I thought Stratum rode a the, brilliant race yeah. on him. Is he the champion that they say he is? I'm not sure. Well, you know? yeah, Tom will tell you, he just never gets a draw. You know, Still, amazingly, you know? never gets a draw. But anyway, he ran a good race. I was, first time I've had a good look at the Majestic uh, Mambo run. 
this was eating up the ground, James. I think it got there too quickly. I think that was the problem. Is the it, problem it just, was in, but yeah. where would it have finished? That's the big well, question. Well, that's uh, obviously the question. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Great. It looks to be very talented. Uh, he's certainly worth another chance, this horse. Yeah, if you thought it was exciting uh, at this stage of the race day, wait till you see <laughs> this one. <laughs> see the Shea, the Shea kid yeah. and his partners and the De Kock kid Murray carrying, on like, yeah, Murray yeah, carrying on like they just found the Kalinan diamond, which they probably have for them. Yeah. Okay, But this horse wins from stone last again. Yeah. Very, very good one. Let's go and pick them up at the start for the Phillies version. Moves in. They're all set and away they go in the SA Phillies Classic. Rockin' Russian began well as one of the early leaders. Radiant Splendors out there too. And Roy's Rivera on the far side. Cashel Palace. Mardell served very wide in those early stages, passing a lot of runners there. Further back to Forest Express, and that race is about uh, two lengths off the leader now, gone very quickly. Silver Thursdays further back, Aurelia Cotter. Then comes Secret Potion, they followed wider out by Folk Dance and Green Top. Then London Secret, Fiorella, 50 lengths off the leader. Saragon, Flickety by far, taking the piece is last. Taking the piece, 17, 18 lengths off the leader with 1,100 to go. They spread out, they're going a good gallop and Mardell Sir eventually got off to lead them. Two and a half lengths clear of Forest Express, Cashel Palace pokes her nose up in third. Back in fourth is Royce Rivera, then comes Rockin' Russian Silver Thursday, gives them five, six lengths start, followed by Secret Potion, Radiant Splendor and Green Top. Then Aurelia Cotter, ten to go with Fiorella, wider out is Folk Dance, Flickety by Fast, further back London Secret, Saragon, and taking the pieces, still last as they turn for home, ten lengths to go. 600 metres to run in the Fulkerboss Drift, SA Phillies Classic, and Mardell Sir by two from Forest Express, Royce Rivera. Rocking Russian looking for a way through. Castle Palace, Silver Thursday on the outside. Secret Potion, Fiorella coming home smartly. And here's Green Top on the outside with Folk Dance. Anyone's call, 300 to go. Aurelia Cotter running on two. Green Top strikes the front. Fiorella taking the pieces, finishing up on the outside. Secret Potion, 200 to go. Green Top, here comes taking the piece on the outside. Green Top taking the pieces, flying. Taking the piece in Green Top. Here it comes. Taking the piece. What it? From Green Top, Secret Potion, Fiorella and Folk Dance. But it's mighty tight. Yeah, very good commentary from Nico. Well done. Built up the excitement. And as we see, young Matthew de Kock, Matthew Makepeace and Michael Shea. Three, uh, two lunatics with a sensible guy. What do you think? I think uh, it's absolutely... Unbelievable. Brilliant. I mean, this is the, the, the came new, from new brigade. Came from Lost. Kellen Murray, the rider. You know, the, um, the Bruce Gardner owned the dam, Lisa, Lisa Ann. Oh, she okay. was a Rambo yes. dancer, Summerhill. Yeah. And, you know, he's uh, Mickey's brother in law. That's and, right. Uh, I must tell you, I, I'm, I'm happy for them, but, uh, you know, I wish they'd, they'd had it as well. You know, they yeah, had it and they sold it. You know? Yeah, well, that's the nature of the yeah. game. And, and Mickey's got to be chuffed, you know, sure. Visionaire. He, yeah. he bred another Group 1 winner, Mickey. And Visionaire, a big plus for Visionaire. James, what is interesting, both Group 1 races, it's the runner up, but give me the green light. Producing it still. Big yeah, time. Yeah. And Muzieni had a winner and a second in Group 1. A yeah. red letter day for him. Red letter day. It's just so absolutely yeah, incredible. This, yeah. this is fantastic. Taking the piece. Yeah. You know and the, the celebrations afterwards have gone viral on YouTube, so you better go and have a look at them. <laughs> I, I think Michael could be crazier than Kevin. No, there's no doubt. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's no, no doubt. doubt. Michael Shea has got um, all the <laughs> attributes of a stuntman. Okay, we're going to move in. We're going to move on and see the See the Gold Cup, the last yeah. 600 metres. Off the leader, and Bondi Blue is the trailer. Homeward bound in the Caradoc Gold Cup, 600 metres to go. Witchcraft still leads the long distance field from Dromedaris and Kitty's Destiny. Sheetweaver's got three lengths to make up. Then Odd Rob, the Elmo effect, just cruised in. As now starting to run on strongly. In behind that one comes Tumbalung, 3.50 to go. Down the inside, Kitty's Destiny. Dromedaris just cruised in, is coming home strongly on the outside. Odd Rob, then Sheetweaver behind that comes the Elmo effect but just cruised in has picked up the lead in the Caradoc Gold Cup goes two lengths clear and just cruised in going to beat Kitty's Destiny just cruised in two and a half Kitty's Destiny on drop third then came the Elmo effect Sheetweaver Pagoda followed by Dromedaris Storm Warning then came Tumbalang bon 
Yeah, there we go. And uh, a big plug for Just Cruised In because about Just As Well, yep. Bruce LaRue. Yeah. And uh, this I think he's stay a nice horse just as well. He just really hasn't had much yeah, chance. chance. He, yeah, chance. If you can throw these horses, you've got a chance. Yeah. So, James, was that the end of Gauteng? Kesney, Fanzel, and Warren picked up the ride, they, yes. and they won very easily. Doing they very well up there. Yeah, Fanzel we obviously got a Sunday, well. um, yeah. and uh, we had two feature races here in Kwasili Natal, and my goodness, they were power-packed. Quite nice fields for Group 3s. Let's go and Sweet. pick them up at the, sto at the 600 for the Bali Turk. Barrellos on the outside, Casimir's about seven lengths off the leader at this stage. Then comes Steel Rose, White River is near the rail, then so Vine, Kazar's the trailer about 14 lengths off the leader. Riker by a length and a half, undercover agent is perfectly placed. Sniper shot has used up a lot of ground but is back in third position. Sandin sees in the yellow at the rail, then Will Jareen. They are followed by Hard to Play, Casimir's on the outside, then Varela and King's Command. They turn into the home stretch with White River. Riker's the leader, Sniper shot. Undercover agent's going for a run down the inside, Sandin sees on the outside. Undercover agent, Sniper shot and Riker as they come to the last 200. An undercover agent hits the front. Sniper shots trying to throw back the challenge but undercover agents going on and undercover agent has won it sniper shot will run into second third is close maybe white river from hard to play well uh, a very good win by undercover agent and uh, well done to greg bortz and brahm who turned up to uh, watch his horse and lead it in pierre corne offered doing it for brett crawford he's got a very strong string brett crawford at the moment well, he's uh, certainly got the horses, and yeah. he's uh, arrived here, and this is uh, the Pete first, uh, first little job. salvo over the yeah. bars, you know, and I think that um, <laughs> the bars, eh? your, your horse <laughs> ran a good race from Raw 13. He's Very good a pretty run, good yeah. horse. Very and good. There's some other, some other decent horses here. Um, you know, I thought White River ran particularly well. Yeah. Uh, hard he's to he's play a, ran on. Gonna, gonna run up. Yeah, no, they, they were good horses right the way through. You wouldn't mind training a lot of these horses. So this horse is by Captain Ali, bred by Mutons Hook, uh, mm. Benny. You know, if you know, no, mention Benny, you know what yeah. trouble you get into. Okay? Benny the dancer. Yeah, Benny yeah. the dancer. So Captain Ali uh, again. Fantastic. Out of a London news man. You, yeah. I don't know why you didn't buy it. You bought yeah, it, my lad. I had. Well, I it was had. A bit the Oracle News was a very good filly yeah. by London bit News. Bit expensive for you. That's the problem. Yeah. Right, Captain we're going to afford the tails. We're going to uh, go along and have a look at the Ims and Kulu stakes, which was for the fillies. And here we saw the reemergence of the gra Grade One winner, Lady in Black, back to her favourite course. Runners. And then comes twice a smart. Camferata starts to improve position. Desert Rhythm's about seven lengths off the leader. Then comes Fish River. Further back in the field at this stage is She's a Dream and Diamond Tyan as the trailer. About 10, 11 lengths off the lead. Elusive Hearts had an easy lead and Camferatus is back second. Barley's third. Light on her toes is back fourth. Then comes Sorceress and Lady in Black's got the black sleeves white cap five lengths to track down. Then twice as smart Fish Rivers on the inside. Top of the lane and Elusive Artist the leader, Camphor Artist second. Now Lady in Black kicks hooked out to the middle of the track to put in a claim. Towards the outside, Twice as Smart's also running on. To Elusive Art the leader, Lady in Black. Twice as Smart becomes a big runner on the outside. Lady in Black is now flat to the boards. Twice as Smart on the outside. They're going to hit the line. I think Lady in Black won it from Twice as Smart and Elusive Art, but very, very close. Well, uh, Lady in Black retains her unbeaten status in this province and she'd won her first three here and she came through. And as uh, Dennis Dryer said, it's a prep and uh, she obviously has bigger fish to fry. She's going to uh, bump the big horses. You can ask Justin later about his big three-year-olds that are yep. coming into town. Just to mention a Cookie Whitehead, fantastic for her second, the uh, twice over. Well, you and uh, Cookie held up the uh, home flag because, yeah. you know, normally by this time of the year we're sort of running with our tail between our legs, yeah. but you run second in the two features. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, it's a, a sign of the times, but uh, need yeah. a bit more money, I think. That's the problem. That's but, the problem. But uh, it augurs well for, for Lady in Black, and well done to everyone who, who's involved with this horse. I was very impressed. Uh, Mr. Engelbrecht uh, bred this. Bred it, yeah. yeah. Louis John Veal, Town de Drott. Okay, quick uh, bit of two, two bits of news. Ace High, the, um, the high chaparral that David Payne trains, uh, ran second in the derby, got touched off. Was it beaten that yeah, close? Huh? Yeah, very, second. very close. Um, 
And so, uh, look, he's obviously a very good horse. Justify, and not George Rolls. No, it was Justify. Was his, won yeah. a Santa Anita Derby in a canter. Uh, beat um, Baltora, which was the early favourite for the classics. For the, uh, and that's by Scat Daddy. Yeah, which is Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn. Two Scat Daddies. They'll probably be top of the boards for the Kentucky Derby. Two Scat Daddies. Just Der shows Derby. You. Just one, one little thing I want to touch on quickly, James. Uh, the Oswalds did a survey of the last 10 years. This, the uh, stakes increases and uh, it took a whole lot of countries and they're, they're obviously promoting it because Australia in the last 10 years have gone up 80%. England, 34%. France, 13%. Ireland, 1%. USA are down 7%, and I uh, spoke to Gold Circle in the last decade, we've gone up 53%, which I think is just about, may, maybe Cape gone up a bit more in the well, last 10 years. That's, uh, that's, that's a good, very good stat. Statistic, yeah. Can hold our own with the, them all. So ob yeah. Australia obviously boosting it because they got the highest figures, but well done to them, and well done to uh, our boys for trying to keep pace. Well, we're certainly above some of the big racing nations, yeah. which yeah. is good. Yeah, so that's not bad at all. Let's go and get ready to chat to Justin Snaith. Well, Justin Snaith uh, comes into town from the Cape and we all shake and shiver in our boots. And with justification, because uh, these guys come with some very, very good horses, some very good stock, and it really makes the KwaZulu-Natal winter season. To have um, visitors uh, able to race against each other in KwaZulu-Natal for three or four months for the big grade ones and even the smaller races, just makes the racing so exciting. And as you've seen in the build-up already, we've had a couple of feature race days here in KwaZulu-Natal. They've been fantastic. Very exciting. Justin, great to have you in the studio, and um, you have a good trip up here. Yes, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, very much so. It's gone, it's gone uh, well so far. The travelling up was all good, because it is a long trip. It's a it is. It's a, people don't realise the logistics. Where you stop in Bloemfontein? Correct. We stopped there for about two, three hours, let the horses have a, a, you know, to just relax a little bit, get a bit of food and water back into them, and then back on the truck and uh, into Natal. So it, 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 it's, a, it's as, as far as you can go, to be honest. Yeah, and on top of that, people don't realise that horses travelling, they don't um, dehydrate, they, they don't pee, they, you know, some of them get very uptight and get travel sickness. Do you have any problems? No, I, we, we, we've been doing it uh, for quite a while. And uh, also, I, I spoke to um, Francesca Comani when they were here, you know, how he, her father uh, traveled horses into Australia for the Melbourne Cup and things like that, because he, he seems like a very good trainer of that. So sat down with them for a while and picked up a few tips. And for myself as well, over the years, just... Uh, making it happen. So it's, it's, it's months of, of planning, even to the point of putting certain horses on certain floats in case things go wrong on a certain truck, like let's say a puncture or some, anything like that, that uh, not all our eggs are in one basket. So it's, even there's lists on who's on which truck, uh, a lot of time and planning goes because your season's done if you don't get that part of it right. So we start with that. You've, you've had it before where you've come here and things have been completely wrong. You've just packed up and gone home. I remember about, what, six or seven seasons ago, it just all went wrong for you. I, I, I'm a firm believer of that. Mm. Uh, it, I bring horses to Natal. I had a horse run on Saturday. It played up and it, it, she got left in the gates. The starter took her certificate away. I said, well, the filly's not happy here. Mm. If I have to take it home immediately, I'd rather take it home. Obviously, the owners might think differently. And uh, if they say, no, no, we want to, you to stay there, then we stay. But uh, 
I, we come up to, to, to Natal thinking, oh, well, every horse is going to win races. It doesn't work like that. So as soon as you see that this horse is not happy here, yeah, the sooner you get that on the float back to wherever else you might want to take it, whether it be the Eastern Cape or Joburg, you need to make that call very quickly. Otherwise, you're wasting your time here. They get here. You give them a few days off just to feel their way, and then you start at Summerfelt. Now, that's got to be a, a big up for you from training at Philippi. I'm not gonna, I don't want to knock your facilities, but I think Summerfelt's facilities give you the opportunity to get the best out of all. Look, I'll be frank. I mean, if some people get upset, well, <laughs> that's your, I'm not going to worry, but the truth of the matter is some of the training facilities in the Western Cape are shocking. Mm. But I have worked... I've never worked, I actually lost some weight. I don't know, I'm always wondering what, how I've actually lost a bit of weight because my eating hasn't changed uh, and I exercise less. But I have worked on our farm in Cape Town like I have never worked before to up that, to, to maybe the level of some of the other training areas in South Africa like Turfontaine, Rijkiesfontein, uh, Summerfelt. I just feel in Cape Town we, we're going backwards. So, but... We've got a beautiful private farm that we train from, and I have spent the whole summer and winter getting it up to a level that I think makes me feel more comfortable in the Western Cape. So uh, I think I've gotten it right. I had blisters and cuts, uh, sunburn, getting this farm to where I think. So when I come to Natal, Summerfelt is just world class. It honestly is. You don't, it's hard training on your own farm. You've got to worry about tracks, maintenance, this and that, the other, managers, all types of things. You arrive at Summerfelt, you leave it to Tony Rivlin and have a go. You know? Correct. I mean, every year I come back, he gets grey and grey. <laughs> but the stress that he puts up with all the trainers. <laughs> which, and I tell you what, your trainers don't know how lucky you are yeah. that you have someone like that that is taking all the aggravation, all the stress of, of maintaining Summerfelt in the condition that is. Every year I come back here, things seem to get better and better. So, uh, as I said, it's become a big part of our training. I'm half Natal, uh, uh, from half my family are all from Natal anyway, so I've, I'm starting to feel like it's becoming, uh, I wouldn't even say a second home, but certainly, you know, a, a big part of our, our time is here and my family are all coming up and, and we give it a good go. If I want to come here and compete, uh, I want to do it at, at, at the best that I can. You want to be comfortable and at home with the place. Correct. Obviously, you have extramural activities as well, and I know that you're uh, a budding Springbok polo player, and that's very important in your life, and I think it's great because it shows what type of horseman you are. You're not just a trainer, and there are a lot of people out there that just train horses, and they, they really have never even sat on a horse. You live and breathe horses. Well, you would, I mean, you will know better than I do, but it seemed like over time as well, a lot of the top trainers were involved in in, in polo and stuff like that and you know just keeping involved in the horseman side of it I think it's very important also which I what I enjoy a lot is I, I am the pony welfare officer of the Western Cape with polo ponies and uh, I enjoy that part of it as well so you know there's always in the old days of you know people were a bit funny about the way polo ponies looked and we've changed all that and and uh, it, it's it's something I enjoy to be honest and it's, it's so it's so uh, social uh, yeah, and I hope my daughter plays one day. Oh, I'm sure that uh, there'll be... Uh, I keep away from why racing. Don't, why, don't you why don't you produce a whole polo team? Like my father, you went and produced six and get, had two reserves. No, you know, no, 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 I'm too busy to have uh, that many kids. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I love my, do my daughter and uh, I will until the day she comes down the road with a jockey. So, uh, <laughs> polo play, I don't mind. The day I see a jockey come down that driveway. Argentine, be careful of those guys. That was <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably right, but yeah. we have a good agreement. Yeah. Justin, okay, let's get to the horses. Now, I, I, it takes tremendous amount of um, effort to get this whole thing on the road, but then to pick out the horses that you want to bring here. How do you go through, you've got a big string, how do you go through the horses and work out what you want to bring here? The program only comes out in April, so it's very hard to know what's coming. Well, look, the good thing is that we, that it, it, the way it's gone now uh, from the old, in the old days, the guys used to load up a, a, a string of horses and come up here and compete in all the races. So I try to come here and compete for the right races. I come here for the feature races. I'm not going to waste my time bringing horses up here for the smaller races uh, because also they need to 
fit into the whole thing. You've got a right-hand turn up, up a hill. You've got Scottsville downhill. You've got to, you've got to try to uh, predict what might happen. I think very important is a horse with a temperament. I think f uh, foremost and the most important thing, if they have to have a good temperament. If they don't have the temperament, they're not going to travel away from home. So that, for me, is the number one uh, uh, when it comes to selecting uh, my string. So now you bring 30. Yes. That's what they give you, 30 boxes. Correct. As you go along, if you send one others home, do you bring others in as replacements? Well, like I said, I do, I do want to, if I feel that I'm not gelling with a horse here in Durban, mm. it's got to go back to Cape Town. Mm. I put, the, I put the, the pressure on and then, yes, replace it with something else, maybe, maybe a two-year-old or maybe something that's improving a lot in Cape Town. You've got to be able to do that because there's going to come a time now where in the season Natal will close for African horse sickness, it, or Cape Town will close. Mm. So you, we just got to get that sorted up before that happens, otherwise then we're stuck until the end of July here. Okay, so now the plums of the season. Obviously, as far as the two-year-olds are concerned, let's start with the two-year-olds. You've got the Golden Horse, uh, the Sprint, uh, the Alan Robertson. Do you have horses for those two? Not really, no. I, I've, I've changed my whole training, and my two-year-olds are, I don't do it. I you used just to, put them, give them the winter off, basically. Correct. We yeah. just go slowly. I, mm. I, the, the handicapping system and everything that happens in South Africa, they're pushing us away from two-year-old racing. That's my opinion. The first time I saw anyone start getting an idea of two-year-old race was Cape Thoroughbred Sales Company when they put on a, a race for a million rand. Mm. Give you some sort of reason. All of a sudden, our juvenile race is filled. And the good thing is those horses then end up in the racing population. That's the idea, is to get all the horses out the maidens as fast as possible into, um, into the, all the divisions, which I think we're going too slow with. And uh, as I said, it's just making a lot of us trainers take more time. So two rolls, I, I, I've brought a couple up that we bought. I think you bred one. I don't think you know that yet, but you're going to find out. I bought one that I think you bred, so, and I brought it to Natal. Oh, we'll be a champion, you know that. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on to the three-year-olds, because the three-year-olds are where you've, you really seem to be very strong. And obviously, Snow Dance looks like the filly for the, the big fillies race at Gravel over 2,000 meters. Uh, how, how's her preparation, and what, do you, what, what are you doing with her? Where, where is she going? Look, we, we planned it that we're not going to be in a lot of the races. So it, that's just the way it works out. You know, with their ratings and stuff, it's very hard to pick, you know, like a, even a prep race for them. There are no prep races. They have to go straight into the guineas. We're trying to keep O Susanna and Snowdance away from each other. They're both very, very good fillies, and I wouldn't like to see them up against each other. So Snowdance would be pretty much aimed at the Phillies Guineas and O Susanna for the um, Will Avington. Yes. That's pretty much uh, uh, to sum it up. But uh, the good thing is today I saw the, the change. Mm. The coats have come good. They, they're starting. Today the, the, the lights came on, which they're is great to, news. Yeah. Because it's taken, how long have they been here? They've been here about two, three weeks. Yeah. So it takes that's two or three weeks, doesn't it, for them to I've settle? Just seen that the, I saw the change today, which yeah. is great news. Yeah. Okay, so those are the two big fillies, and they're, they're obviously you've got Lady in Black, you saw a win yesterday. Yes. Well, that was a convincing win. Uh, At gave, the weights, very, yeah, she very gave six good. Kilos you give to away to your own age group, that's impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she looks like she might be the big danger as far yes. as the Quasili Natal horses are concerned. Do you see anything else on the horizon that might be dangerous to those fillies? No, not really, no. I think Snowdance is very good. Look, we need luck in the running, and things are going to all go well. Well, mm. but my goodness, can this fellow run? Yeah. She's proper, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, Grant Fenica, are you getting him to the track more often? <laughs> <laughs> Even with snow dance. <laughs> All but right, that was as, a curve. As I said, that was a curve if, he walk, if he walks up at the right track, you know, it doesn't go to, <laughs> the, old, to it doesn't go to the old Clearwood or something. <laughs> he hasn't heard that it's been closed down for three years and he rocks up. Uh, he, he's, he, he's a top jockey. I mean, you get him, if you get him to the right course, he's, he's, a, he's as good as they, as they get. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, uh, let's we'll not worry about him then. Let's worry about some of the others. Then we talk about the sprints, the big sprints, and the Golden Horse sprint is obviously the right race. And... I know a horse that we like a lot because Laf and I both uh, end up finding the horse, uh, Sir Frenchy, 
he looks like he's really made for the golden horse. You know, I never planned it in the beginning. But as I've arrived here and I've looked at what the condition, the how it's going to work. So I've got horses like, let's say, Sergeant Hardy, Bishop Bounty. They're one one sevens, one two three. Yeah, they're going to be sixty how, kilos. How are they going to have any chances? Mm. So, uh, also, although I look, so French, oh, wait a moment, you might come into this race for fifty two, fifty three. Mm. You're a runner. Mm. So exactly. Yes, I've, I've I've actually now repro and and he'll be aimed at that. He's a horse that's just seems to have been improving and improving and he, you go look at his races he's running against the best yeah absolutely he's got the form so yes. people are now listening to this looking at their chapter challenge you know they have this great competition yes where you pick out 12 horses and obviously they want to know what justin snaith thinks of his horses and i, I thought that look i thought you, uh, sergeant hardy ran a cracking good race yesterday. i tell you what people don't know what a good run that was mm. it, it, it bernard was you know the horse had done a lot mm. as as he doesn't corner yeah. he's I wouldn't like to play polo on him <laughs> because yeah. there's no turning back and going back <laughs> if you miss the ball. So he, he wouldn't like to be in, in his path when he's running it. No, nah, <laughs> no. Nah. I mean, we're talking a horse. He's like a war horse. Mm. He can he goes he's straight. A beautiful horse. He's stunning. I tell you, I'm, I'm falling in love with him more and more every season because he's just he's an he, he can't breathe. Yeah. And and he's a one. 21 or whatever they got, 123 they got him off now. So he doesn't corner. Mm. So as he came out the gates, he took out some of the horses on the outside, <laughs> cut himself up behind, took the, the one shoe sideways, and then fought all the way around the turn, because he just, he doesn't turn, mm. and then came into the straight and, and he was tied. And he, Bernard just kept him rolling to the line. He's going for the computer form sprint. Mm. So uh, that was a good burn for, for the yeah. computer form sprint. So you travel him from here up there? Yes, I spoke to Alistair Gordon because he seems to have done very well. And a lot of the Natal Over trainers... Over the years, Alistair's been phenomenal in Johannesburg. So I had a, you know, it's very nice. I, you, you, we can, I can go to a trainer like that, you know. Mm. And, and I had a quick chat to him because I had a, a plan that I thought might work. I've tried it and I haven't been too successful with it. And, and uh, it's funny enough is what, what the way he was doing it. So I, I was very glad to get reassurance. Mm. Okay, so then... Um, that's the sprinter, and obviously Bishop's Bounty, you know, who's just below. I don't think he's as good as Sergeant Hardy, and he's uh, rated the right race around. at the yeah. right yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the July is obviously the race everyone wants to win, and that's obviously the race people want me to ask you about. Yes. And you've you've got some nice three-year-olds. What does what are your plans for the July? Look, I saw a horse gallop very well today. Do it again. Hmm. You know, he's second in the Derby. He's no slouch. He might come in at the right weight. He's a horse that, as I said, I just, wow, he galloped well today. So whether he'll suit Gravel, the short running, he likes to come from a long way back, uh, that's going to be a question mark. So he needs to run here, prove that he can compete at this track, and then he could be a, a contender for the July. Okay, so so what would his plan be? Would he run in the Daisy Guineas you'll have, first? You'll, you'll, the first race will be an easy, easy type of race in the Guineas because yeah. it's too short for him. Yeah. Uh, and then... The, you'll fire up in the Daily News yeah. and then take it from there. Okay. But so, then, yeah, so the, the other horse that, that certainly is the... So if, you, if you're not going to win the, the Met or you, you're not going to be in the money, you want to run six no. because the, you don't get handicapped for running six. And that brings in a horse like African Night Sky. Carried level weights in the, in the Met, 60 kilos. He didn't get any penalties for it. And now he runs in the July, which we have to carefully place him through the races. So he comes into the July with a, with a low Did weight. Did he run the other day here? No. no. Who, who we will horse? quietly pick his races. Yeah. Who so was the horse you ran here the other day? I thought ran a cracking Oh, no. Well, that's a nice little horse too. Oh, Platinum Prince. Platinum but, Prince. But only at the weights. Yeah. You know, they're not good enough to compete at 60 kilos and stuff like that. I mean, we, we, we believe that and, and, and let them prove, prove me wrong. The but July, you the can right get way. in with 54 kilos Oof. with the right horse. Runners. Yeah. And those are the type of horses. So if we looked at your July horses at this stage, the fillies, you go and prep for the fillies races. You've said yes. that they're not going for the July. Yes. Um, the, the older horses, obviously Platinum Prince. Yes. African Night Sky. Yes. What else? Um, I th look, at, I don't want to say O Susano won't run, mm. but if she gets... A heavy weight, she won't run. I can tell you that right now. There's no ways we'd take a chance with her. But uh, we, let's first see how she how she handles gravel. Or that's why I say the three olds. It's it's all we've got to see how they handle the track. Yeah. It's a different track. Right hand turn, up a hill. 
And uh, my fillies normally haven't had a problem with it, so I'm pre predicting it won't, it'll be all good. Um, there's a, a horse that ran second in the uh, uh, group one in Cape Town, Star Express. But I'm also starting to worry a little bit whether she'll get the distance or not. So I think it's pretty much down, you know, I've got Elusive Silver back again. He'll run next weekend. Let's see what happens. Okay. I mean, he was just about favorite last year yeah. uh, and injured himself. He's back. I just don't know. We're going to see how it goes. But last I think Af Af African Night Sky Platinum Prince. Yeah, yeah. They, look like, they look like the, the two. If they come in at the right weight in the yeah. Durban July yeah. and crack a half-decent draw, hmm. they're, going to take, they're, going to be, they're going to take some beating, is my opinion. Then we go to the stayers. Obviously, there's some quite nice races for stayers. And you've got a lovely program for stayers here yeah. in Natal. Yeah. Graham Van Burley, is he still around? No, he's shame. Been... No, no. He, we retired him after the Met. Okay. So he's not here. But I've got horses. I've saved horses. Yeah. A horse called Strathdon. He won four in a row in Cape Town. Yeah. He's, he's still low rated. He's a Foster's horse. Yes. Yeah. He's very, very nice horse. Very nice stayer, Savano. Yeah. Uh, he's a horse that uh, I think is going to take a lot of beating in the staying races. And then um, Made to Conquer. He just needs to prove that he can make the step up. Yeah. He's, a, he's, quite, he's won four in a row, I think, as well. So uh, we, we, we'll so, be... Of, of, are we right horses, right races? It's, it's like uh, starting a war with someone. You've got to strategize exactly where you're going and what you're doing. But before that, you've obviously got Big Sale this weekend. Yeah. Big Sale two weeks' time in Joburg. How are you guys going as far as replenishing? Because you've got to get stock. Look, uh, about two years ago, my brother, we sat down. He said, Justin, I'm worried about racing. So I said, OK. It's not good news. And he's normally, he knows what he's talking about. And he says, we've got to get down and work. Mm. If we don't start, you know, buckling down, tighten the ship. F finding new, new finding participants. New, all of that. And, and also fight for the ones that are around in, in racing already. Because at the end of the day, if you want to send your kid to a, a private school or something, we need to be sharp here. Mm. So we did, and we've worked really hard. And it's, it's, it's paid off. And... Uh, so, as I said, but it's taken a lot of work. Nothing's come easy uh, in the last few years. And uh, I think to everyone in racing, we've got to just, uh, you know, just sharpen pencils and, 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 and work hard. And, and, and I think racing's going to do really well as we come out of it now. And as what I've seen in Gold Circle here, it's mind-blowing with all the, the, the marketing and, and getting onto the... So everyone can get onto social media. But yeah. it's, it's the way you do it. Yes. I mean, you can go and say, oh, yeah, this horse won a race, and he has an owner, and post it, and someone's sitting on an iPhone. Uh, 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 he has social media. Not good enough. You need to come up with something. It's, and that's what I think has happened here in, in Natal. I've seen this youngster walking around the course. At the, it's incredible. And the, whoever's doing that, uh, uh, well done. It's a step in the right direction. Justin, you're a family-run operation. I've known your parents from when we were little kids together. Um, we're in awe of you guys because you seem to take racing to a different level. You have a bunch of people around you who are very staunch. Um, I think John Freeman was probably one of the biggest wins you ever got into because I know John as well from uh, all his life, and he really is a top agent. Well, I, th I think... You Exactly. That. You know, you're always planning for the future. And my brother said, here's a guy, reliable, honest, being around the block. And uh, I think we work really well together. It's exactly what happened. John needed that youth back, you know, uh, revving him up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've worked so well as a, as a team. And he's got the most fantastic uh, patrons behind him. Yeah. And... Uh, as I said, I mean, it, that is our biggest strength at the moment for us in, in racing is the guys that are backing us. Yeah, and especially your mother and father. Don't forget them. Oh, no, no, I'll be, I'll, <laughs> you wouldn't be allowed to. Oh, that's How's your uh, dad going as a grandfather? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Listen, when yeah, I was trying to run you over. So. No, when I was two, he drove me over. I mean, I ended up in ICU, broke my arm, <laughs> stitches on my neck. No, no, I keep my daughter far keep away far from away from me. <laughs> Far away from jockeys and my and, and, and grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Safest way. Justin, fantastic having you on the show. And um, uh, really, uh, we wish you very well for the season. And obviously, 
we in the Tall Boys and we want to win, but it's fantastic having you guys in town because that's what makes a season. And thanks for coming to the studio for us. No, thank you very much. And uh, as I said, we just we do the best that we can here and, and, and hoping for results and it's not going to come easy, I'm, sh I'm sure. Well, everyone's moving into town for the big season and this is the first salvo we've fired as far as winning ways is concerned. Uh, just as a, as a reminder for um, an anniversary, and it's a very, very sad anniversary. Saturday, they're racing in Johannesburg. It's the, it's the 30th anniversary of the Henneman air disaster. And we lost a lot of very good friends on that air disaster. Um, I had some great friends on there. And we just want to remember them and remember um, the Basils. And uh, they do a lot to just keep that memory in our minds. But uh, until next week, we hope you have a great week's racing. And we'll be back with another important guest next week. Maybe not as important as Justin, but another one. Your world of winners is now online at www.teletrack.com. Simply subscribe to log into your account from any mobile device in South Africa and access a wide variety of content from our membership package options. Listen in via a live audio stream, catch live racing locally and internationally, or view a wide variety of Teletrack magazine shows to stay informed and updated on the go at any time. It's never been easier. Go to teletrack.com now.